What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today, Tuesday's MLB slate. Um, I only played the one lineup last night. Didn't get there. Sheets talked about a lot of the right things. And as we were just talking pre-show, you had a lot of the right ideas, but just the, some of the wrong tournaments and then some things just stalled out on you. But it looked like you uh, you had a decent night at least. Yep. Uh, doubled my money. Um, I ran kind of poor with respect to which uh, tournament I put my Fenway stacks in uh, with the right with the right pitchers or whatever. Um uh, but it was all right. I was happy with my process. And I'm telling you, one of the, one of the, one of the research things I want to do for next year, um, is, is really put to a test, like from a data and a, in a you know, research perspective, my, the, the way I, the way I sometimes think about baseball players in the same way I used to think about horses and stuff in general, you know, about like, like, like what happens to, like what happens to players really off of ceiling performance, not what I just assume is going to happen, you know, or, or what I just kind of like, bias myself into thinking did happen when it really didn't. I want to, I want to research stuff like that and see what it actually, what it actually means. You know, when, when I, when I checked into this stuff a few years back, it was exactly the opposite, actually. Interesting. And in, 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 it makes perfect sense actually in baseball, because usually it's, you're facing the same lousy team. For right. example, that year, was a year where Philadelphia had nine games where they scored double digit runs against just the Marlins alone, but it was That's a really bad Marlins team with a really bad bullpen. So that was the only th the only reason why it's going to be hard to kind of track it because you have to factor in the the matchups. So oh, much. it's definitely hard, but yeah. nobody said it was easy. You know, I just yeah. I, I just think it's interesting. So. Yeah, no, I, I I'm totally I, I agree with you. Um, all right, let's call up your screen and we'll uh we'll go game by game here. I think it's an interesting slate. Um, it's you know end of the season, so exactly what I said would happen did happen. In fact, in some spots, I mean, Alvarez came out what in the fifth inning, um, of that game just for no reason. Um, as far as I could tell, anyway, unless I missed something. But you got to keep an eye. You got to just be aware that these teams that are playing for nothing, you know, especially the ones that are already clinched, they're going to be more cautious with players uh, in certain situations. So, with that said, how, and how did um as a test case, how did um how long did a Logan Webb go last night? I honestly, he was struggling early on. I don't know. I thought he, he did well. I thought he did okay through five innings. I, so he, I probably, he probably did. I mean, it was it's probably they were just going to let him go five. I'm, I'll double check my. Uh, Okay. DK live app right now, but uh, why don't we get into this, uh, this first yeah. one here? What do you, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts as far as what you do? Right. So the way, the way I have today's slate um, is I have, to give you an advance. Uh, I have like three, three main stacks four four secondary stacks. And then with pitching, I have one pitcher of well above the rest and then like 11 million guys like underneath it. Right, right, right. And I think both of these guys are legit prospects for the one of the million guys underneath um right I, I think both of these guys are in play um uh Oda Rizzi at 5400 I mean anybody against uh against Washington at 5400 I think is viable um and and I think Josiah Gray is always playable I mean it's a tough matchup obviously um but he's always playable as one of those million other guys and with respect to the hitting uh I do have Atlanta as one of my top uh my top three stacks on DraftKings and also one of my top four on FanDuel um, for all the reasons that, you know, Josiah Gray is volatile and Atlanta is a good hitting team. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like Atlanta and I do have interest in both pitchers. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm going to probably, I would take me a lot of lineups to probably get to Gray today because he's, he's been struggling a little bit. It's obviously a tough matchup. He hasn't, his strikeouts have come down. Um, there's always a chance that they don't let him extend as, as long. And now that we're, the, you know, this would be a second to last start of the season, I believe. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just aware of that. And I, and I, and I do, I do have Atlanta as one of my stacks tonight. Um, you do have for what it's worth, like eight mile an hour winds coming in from left field. Uh, just, you know, makes them maybe, maybe gives a tiny, tiny boost down to, to, uh, to the Atlanta bats and a little boost up to Oda Rizzi And, and if you like gray, I have Odorizzi a little bit ahead of Gray, uh, just because of the price. But we'll see if we need it because, like you said, there's a lot of other, a lot of other options that are might be a lot, a lot make a lot more sense. These are just some guys to consider, basically. Uh, all right, Toronto and. All right, let me let me start. So I'm gonna give you guys, gotta give you guys the update on the Yankees marketing machine. So okay, so they they really need to like sell out all their all their seats. You know that's why like when they were at home, you know, they just wouldn't let judge get those 62 yet because then, then, then who's going to come for those last few games, you know, because Yankees will have clinched, you know, and then that's, uh, you know, so who's going to come for the last garbage time games when, you know, they were arresting people or whatever after everything's clinched. So they, they, they got that thing home. 
then they're like, okay, we can't let him hit in Toronto because we do want, you know, people to show up for these games. And then the Yankees really made it difficult because now they clinch, right? So they clinched the division. So there's really nothing for the Yankees to play for, I don't think, right? But so so now the Yankees are like, okay, just you got to get them home before the record. So this way, you know, they only have they only have three more home games. Like after today, they have a day off, and then they finish off at home against the Orioles three games, and then they finish their whole season on the road with a four gamer at Texas. So they got three more games to sell out before they, you know, obviously sell out every game in the playoffs. So there's no way Judge gets two home runs tonight, but he could get one. Um, <laughs> with that said, that's a, that's a long way of saying that I really don't have much interest in either, in either of the hittings uh, on, on, in draft games. But on FanDuel, I actually am getting to some degree of Yankees. Now, with respect to the pitching, I cannot imagine a world where Cole is forced to do anything. Um, but Cole is Cole; it'll do whatever. I, I, I don't. I'm not playing him tonight. Um, and this, this will, this will be. You watch. This will be when he gets the freaking forty. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm not playing him tonight, uh, and I'm not playing Mitch White. And I'm not playing Toronto, and that's where I'm at. Why is this run total so low for for the Yankees? Uh, someone's gonna have to explain this to me. Why they have because they probably me. are not going to be playing anybody. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. No, Mitch White has has been really struggling, and the Yankees. No, I, have... I meant I meant their lineup. Maybe they put up a bad lineup. I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know. I, it, it's I don't know, man. It makes no sense to me. Uh, may, may, I have to take a look and see what the roof situation is. If the, if it's windy and blowing in or something, and they open the roof. Maybe that's why I, I honestly have no idea why this run total is low. And as of right now, I would say the Yankees are an interesting uh, stack at really low ownership. And I just, I just, for the life of me, I mean, I think we saw this matchup earlier in the season. I'm going to just double check with Mitch White thing. And I'm pretty sure that it must, it was, may have been somebody not Mitch White. It was Mitch White. Um, but I remember, I thought the Yankees had like a five and a half or six run total in that game. And I don't understand why it would all of a sudden be four. Unless, like you said, they put out a, a lousy lineup, they're gonna. Put, Aaron Judge is gonna be in the lineup anyway. Yeah. Um, and and I think the Yankees are just gonna be very low owned. So I'm I'm definitely on board with uh with a shot at the Yankees, assuming that the roof is closed and all that. Um, but we'll see. I mean, again, they don't have anything to play for really except for Judge. But it's uh, it does just feel like too low a total. All um, right. Um, what do you got next? Is it uh Baltimore Boston? I do have Baltimore Boston. All right, why don't you start that one off real quick? I'm gonna grab something. From the yeah, door. I think um, I think you go right back to Fenway. I think you go right back to Boston, and uh, uh, on Fanduel, I would also get to Baltimore. So for me, I would go uh, again. This is not it's not my speed. I mean, Boston just scored a hundred thousand runs last night. But nonetheless, they are uh, showing up as one of my top three stacks alongside of Atlanta and the other and another one. And uh, yeah, so Boston and I don't know why I'm more fan duel than DraftKings for Baltimore. But um, you talked me into the Baltimore really, really nicely yesterday to, to complete that stack. So I'll let you talk me into that again if you want. Yeah, I I, uh, I see no reason why to avoid this game tonight again after two shootouts in a row. Um, you know, it's not ideal hitting weather or anything. I honestly think, though, that if we're going to talk about Oda Rizzi, shouldn't we consider Rich, Rich Hill at least? Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm reaching here, but 5,700. And look, he's 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 obviously, you know, streaky-ish, but he's, I mean, last time they faced this team, he put up 25. Um, it was just a couple starts ago. I, I, I think Rich Hill has a long shot, is, is maybe as, as good a play as Oda Rizzi. Even though it's a tough matchup and all that stuff, he he does have the better strikeout stuff than Odorizzi does. I think that's kind of an interesting pairing to, to think about. Like, just if you're going to get way off the board, that's a, just just something I'm considering. But mostly, it's going to be about the bats in this game tonight. On uh, in this particular one, you got a uh, you've got Kramer coming off of his ceiling performance. Boy, these guys really beat the hell out of Houston last time. They shut him out twice in a row. Um, that's nuts. They had the, the, the almost complete game shutouts back to back. That I, I can't believe that happened to Houston. Um, you had Kremer with the complete game shutout, and then you had the eight and two, eight and two thirds from uh, from the guy last night. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he was the the prospect, uh, Bradish. Um, I, I think go right back to it. I also think that it's you know that may, maybe it's worth noting that that Kremer is probably a little better of a pitcher than people think he is, and has been pretty good this season. So 
Uh, again, I like that. I like the, I like playing games in Fenway, but both pitchers I think are a little bit better than maybe it's not just, okay, we have to obviously stack it again, but I, I have no problem with it either. As of right now, they're both on my list, but I don't, I don't have the, I don't have my final top stack figured out yet. Uh, all right, let's get over to the next one. Miami, Balt, Miami, New York. Um, and uh, Sheets, why don't you let me know? What, what are you, what are you thinking about doing here? I, I don't, I don't think I'm doing much of anything with this game. I don't mind Taiwan Walker. Um, I think he's in play. He's one of those, uh, one of those, one of those secondary uh, uh, pitchers. Um, and yeah, what's that? Yeah, I, like, I think that makes sense. Sorry, good. And I'm not really get to get into any of the hit. Um, so yeah, I, Taiwan Walker is per- perfectly playable. Is my priority? No, but he's 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 you know depending on how many lineups I play, I might get to him. Hmm. Um. I like Lizardo in general. I think he's got really good stuff. I don't love this matchup for him, uh, but I think he's, I mean, he's, he's a good pitcher. So I, uh, I, I like Tywin Walker and uh, that's pretty much it for me in this game. I, 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 again, he's, he's a, he's a little better than the other plays we've mentioned, but I have them sort of in a similar category because the pricing Philly, Chicago, which means immediately first thing we do is check the weather and it is blowing in 10 miles an hour from left field with at 53. It's 53 degrees. Uh, I think we have to have Aaron Nola as the top pitcher on the slate. Yep. Um, can, can I, can I interest you in, in the other guy? Um, not really. If the wind's blowing in. I, just, I, I mean, what is it? Yeah, yeah maybe. I mean, sure, actually. Well, well, wait, got six, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. He's got six strikeouts in his last game, seven strikeouts the game before that, eight strikeouts the game before that. I think they're going to let him go. I mean, I don't know. I, I, well, look, again, I, I'm letting I'm, him go I'm, means he's capped probably at 90 pitches. Okay. I, I wouldn't assume that he would throw any more than that. I, I would be shocked if he threw any more than 90, but that that's probably good enough if he's throwing 90. Um, yeah, I guess I guess it's fair enough to consider him. Um, I'm not crazy about it, to be honest with you. I, Philadelphia is a lot stronger than the than the weak the weak teams that he that he picked on. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, his three out of his four starts have been against three the three like worst hitting teams in the National League. Um, but he's been good. Um, and I played him last time he he pitched, and he you was not owned on that slate. You did. Uh, I, I just don't know if I can do it on this. I, I, I just right. think it's too big a slate for me to pay 7,600 for him. And Philadelphia is a patient team that I hate taking pitchers against. Even yeah. if the, with the wind blowing in, it's just, they just are, they just make you work and you've got lefties that can hit the ball. I just, I personally am just on the Nola side of it, but you know what? Well, yeah. Well for, well, for sure. I mean, I have no, it's like, that's like almost yeah. locked in. Yeah. Yeah. He's my, he's my top guy right now. So uh, I get it though. I mean, I get what you're saying. Like they're even, but even in those games, I just, you know, I just, there are guys who are cheaper than him that that, that have been putting up better numbers than that, or, uh-huh. or at least occasionally, you know, and maybe not as consistently as it looks. Cause he's only pitched four games, but I, I don't know if I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know if I have it in me to do it. I, I think I'm more just on the NOLA and, and, and nothing else in this game personally. Well, White Sox, Minnesota, this is the, I, I don't have, I finally found one that I don't, uh, um, uh, I don't have interest in anything. Uh, I have secondary interest in FanDuel on for the for the Twins. That's it. Uh, actually, that's not true. That was from yesterday. Sorry. No, no, wait. Uh, no, actually, I do have some secondary interest in in Minnesota on DraftKings. Sorry about that. Uh, but aside from that, I really have nothing. Else. Yeah, um, I think I could you could make a long shot case for Johnny Cueto, but I, I don't see any reason to. Um, personally, this is probably just a cross off game for me. Not good hitting weather, uh, good pitching weather, so I will uh, I will skip this one as well. And then we get to the uh, the other four, seven forty game, which is the oh, sorry I have to move my screen around here. Um, St. Louis Milwaukee. Um, sh- Sheets, I mean, like I, I'm sort of struggling with what to do in this one personally, because I I always like Woodruff. It's a, you know, it's Milwaukee, so I have some respect for them on a big slate. I think I have Woodruff on my list, but I don't have like a I need to play him feeling. And then there's a part of me that wants to like take a look at individual bats for Milwaukee, but I'm just get, I just get tired of it with Quintana. It's the same thing every time. So I think I'm probably I think I, I have some Woodruff interest, but I, I most likely am just going to stay away here. 
And for what it's worth, I don't think, you know, if we just talk about Wisnus, Wisniski or whatever, you should probably consider Quintana based on, you know, how way he's looked lately, uh, including dominating my Dodgers the other night, as he always does. And yeah, I think that he's, I think that he's every bit as good a play as the, some of the other names we mentioned, but I'm, I'm not going to go there on this slate. I think I'm just, just interested in Woodruff probably. Yeah. Um, I have Woodruff as a, you know, just honestly, just one of the, one of the other guys, um, today um is one of the other secondary guys um i don't know if i'll get to him is is uh what's our fear with him is it just that it's st louis and they're decent because yeah. he, he's been absolutely incredible um and I, I don't know it just feels like he should be more popular than he is yeah, yeah. i guess um i guess and i i put he's been he's been he's been good and he it wasn't too highly owned the last few times he's been good. Also, um, is he yeah, a better play than Cole? Is he a better play than Cole? I mean, how many pitches do they let Cole throw tonight? That's what I'm saying. That's um, my. That's my. Is he a better play than Verlander? And, and he's yeah, he's definitely a better play than Cole anyway. I mean, he's not facing Toronto. Toronto doesn't strike out um, against this particular team. 153 at bats. They're hitting 203 off of Woodruff. Uh, with a 228 on base percentage, so he doesn't want, he's not walking anybody. He's five walks and 153 at bats, 42 strikeouts. So he's at about what th- close, getting close to that 30 percent strikeout rate. I don't know. I think he's a pretty reasonable play. I mean, he's he's got 30 fantasy points in three straight games. I'm not going to argue with you. you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think that I think that he's a better. I think I'm going to prioritize him a little higher than I initially did. Okay. All right, uh, Houston, Arizona, <laughs> another one of the. Well, for, well, before we leave that, before we leave that, I, I want to okay. give that a little more credit. The Woodruff play. I mean, it's certainly from a DFS perspective, a very, very natural and and perfectly awesome pivot off of Nola. You know, like yeah. if you don't want to play them both. I mean, because he's more expensive and and less owns, but he certainly has the same ceiling. You know, um, so yeah, I, I from a D, from a GPP perspective, I. I I didn't mean to dismiss it like that. I yeah. think it's actually kind of an elite GPP type play. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to emphasize that. No, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Um, and we get another one of the guys in, in the Houston, Arizona game. <laughs> Verlander probably can get there on 90 some odd pitches. Uh, I'm looking for massive ceilings. And I, I think I have Woodruff and Nola a little bit higher than I do Verlander. That's where I'm at. Couldn't agree with you more. All right. Um, I, well, I, do, I do think for what it's oh, worth that Cole Ant, and Verlander both throw 90 pitches tonight. <laughs> but do we want to uh, do we want to do we want to take a shot at Houston against Zach Allen or not really? No. Okay. Zach Allen has been one of the hardest guys to hit in baseball this season. <laughs> um he's what is he, third in the league in Sierra and whatever. <clears throat> if it happens, it happens. No interest for me. I'm not really not really finding a lot of stacks that I that I'm into today. Uh, uh, all right. The next one, uh LA and Oakland. Uh, this oh, is Alexa, a... Alexa, can I stack Oakland and the Angels tonight? Oh, let's see, let's see about the weather. Okay, so Oakland is in, in LA. It's it's yeah, it's perfect. Eighty two degrees. A um, little wind blowing out, but not much. Uh, I think you can make an argument for both of these teams. That's what know. I meant. That's what yeah. I meant. Oh, okay. Well, let's do some business then. We won't find out what happens till one in the morning. So so be it. I like both of these teams. I like the Angels a lot better. Yeah, well, I think you know what you you me and thirty percent of the pool, right? Yeah, I do think also Lorenzen is not a bad play. <laughs> um, I know I just said Oakland, but I, I think that it's going to be Oakland. I think I think that the Angels are like the the natural stack people are going to probably yeah. go to. Yeah. Um, I'm just making sure it's not it's not, not quite as what it's, I would have thought um, outside of Otani and Trout. But I, I do like the Angels here, and I think that the A's are definitely in play, especially for a mini stack. But I also think Lorenzen is in play as a, as a as one of the other guys. I agree. I agree with that. I have Lorenzen as one of those other guys as well. Yeah. So any anything specific you want to highlight here, or just want to move on to the next one? No, I I you know I have the Angels as my top as one of the top three stacks alongside of Atlanta and Boston, and then I have uh, Oakland as one of my uh, one of my secondaries alongside of. Um, of Minnesota, who I mentioned before, and then a couple of others we'll get to, actually. Yeah. All right. 
All right. Well, now we've got an interesting one because uh, we have the actual best pitcher on the slate, <laughs> um, probably. You really think Musgrove's the best pitcher, huh? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just think that I think Urias is it's crazy. To, no, I don't care. I, I love Alcant- Alcantara, whatever. And I like I, great. He throws a little bit deeper into the games and he and he has, you know, a much worse winning whatever. It, it, somehow why why it's impossible for Urias to win the, the Cy Young. I don't understand it. Um, I think he's been the best pitcher. Consistently, I think Gonsolin would be the other one, and I and I think that Alcantara is a better pitcher than these guys, but has not had the same seasons, and he also pitches, you know, I don't know, against a lot weaker opponents in a weaker park, a uh, weaker, a better pitching park. Uh, all right. Anyway, with that said, I have some interest in the Dodgers tonight, and I have a little bit of interest in Arias, but I probably am going to end up not playing him because he's a much better real life pitcher than a DFS pitcher. But I do like the Dodgers a little bit. Well, you know how hard it is. How, how many innings he pitched this year for, for uh, Arias? He's pitched know. a lot of innings. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, he only has 157 strikeouts. His WHIP is 0.95. That is that is that is humming. awesome. I mean, like, that is like that is uh. I mean, it's hard to do that when when yeah. when you're when you're not a pure strikeout guy. You know, um, yeah. that's uh, that's a like you said, it's a sneaky underrated season. I think for uh, for. Uh, for and Arias. it's been so consistent too. Like he's only had like two bad starts, I think, all season. Maybe three bad starts all season. Yeah. Um, with that said, I I don't have a shred of interest in this game from a DFS perspective. Um, uh, do you like anything here? I mean, I like the Dodgers. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. I don't see. I don't think Musgrove is any sort of. Well, they score eleven on them last time they they faced. That was them. it. I think um, that, was, that should be good enough. Yeah. So. Um, so I like, I, I think the Dodgers are, are definitely on the board here uh, for me against Musgrove. He's even as good as he is. He, he, he's the exact profile of the type of pitcher that the Dodgers tend to tend to beat up a little bit. Um. All right. Next we have Texas Seattle. And. Well, this is the play, right? I mean, both of these guys are, are reasonable to me actually, but I, I think Kirby is, is which one are you saying is the play? I'm waiting Kirby coming off of the off of the toasting at Chalk. I mean, like, yeah, I think so. I mean he got minus eight fantasy points. He was he was on he was literally 80% on. It was like a three-game slate that he was on. And yeah. he, he's listen, pitching, man. You know, something it's not that's so easy sometimes. Yep. And it's just still it's, it's literally his one bad game in like a while. Um mm-hmm. and uh I think he gets right back on there and just takes to takes to Texas and you know and Puts up his frustrating eighty-five pitches and and you know and gets his uh, gets his yep. gets in the twenties again. You know, I, I think that's uh, uh, I think he's probably the safe safer of these SP two cheaper guys. I guess. Um, I don't. I'm not as into Perez. Maybe I, as a matter of fact, I have um, a Seattle as my as like a secondary a secondary stack. I guess I haven't learned my lesson about the Perez. Um, uh i can't do perez against seattle um i just i have a little too much respect for seattle and i, I will i will get to a little seattle as a secondary so i think kirby is certainly a good sp2 and i think that um that seattle is kind of a semi-sneaky secondary three man or something like that. yeah I, i'm not going to get to seattle um i don't like this th- this is not the same seattle team i mean without i, I do think it's, it's a really different lineup when you take out uh julio rodriguez it's sure. just to, you know, by, say he's their best hitter would be the an understatement. Um, but I actually could see an argument for for guys like Hanager and Suarez, especially. Don't love the the rest of this. Eh, it's okay for Ty France, I guess, but kind of a weird stack too, because then you end up with a like lefty. You could play Dylan Moore in there, but or Crawford in the lefty lefty, but you can't play Santana with France. And you kind of, sadly that's two guys you'd want to prioritize i don't think i like the stack i do like suarez and hamager individually um but i like kirby i like i totally agree with everything you said about kirby and i think that he's a really strong play it's really interesting they have a 2.9 implied total here and Kirby. we have got kirby projected at 10 percent ownership that's not going to be the case right no 2.9 run total Just well like the only thing is if people somehow can find a way to play Nolan and woodruff together um yeah but I don't think Woodruff I, is going to be that appealing to people today. Yeah, I don't have um, my the way my ownership is. It's it's Nola gets it all, and then everybody else gets a little. You know, like I, I don't have anybody over twenty percent except for him. Yep, that makes. I understand. Actually, that's not true. I have, I have Verlander twenty five, but um, I think I think Verlander and Cole are very similar plays. Um, 
Neither than that great. Totally agree Wood, Woodruff, Woodruff has to be better. I mean, than those two, like you were saying. I mean, like Woodruff. Well, he's definitely got the higher ceiling because they're they're still you know playing and they're letting him go. I think. Yeah. Well, that's. I have no reason there. to think that they're not going. Let me just. They're still what they're one and a half. Yeah, they're still at. They're still in there. Let me just see. I know. I'm just, sorry. Give me one second. Standing. Because that is it is kind of an important thing to to figure out. <laughs> we probably right. probably shouldn't leave the people hanging on that one. Right. Yeah. So for the wild card, they are still technically right there. Yeah. They're in yeah, the race. He's, he's, he's the, you know what? He's probably the best player. I mean, when you think about it. I'll tell you what, if you could get Woodruff and Kirby at low ownership together, that might That's be. That's what I mean. Problem. Yeah. I like that, Sheets. Um, and then we go to a stadium where I never, hardly ever stack, and I will absolutely be willing to stack the Giants tonight. I have no problem with it. Um, I think that they're actually in, in the top tier of my stacks. And I, I know Urena, maybe you want to make it a mini stack because Urena tends to keep the ball on the ground. He's actually gone deeper a little bit lately. Uh, the, if, if he, if his control like gets away from him, you could see a, just, a, I mean, he, he might not last two innings in this game, but he did pitch well against them at home last time out. Um, I, I still think I'll go right back to San Francisco here. And uh, I, I actually like them quite a bit as a stack and that's, pretty much it uh, that's that's it for my uh my thing i have san francisco atlanta the angels boston and baltimore all sort of fighting as my top stack and then my contrarian stacks as the dodgers and the yankees which sounds what, is, what, what is the uh the weather in san francisco it's the 63 degrees all right so which on this slate is not like necessarily much different than some of these other ones you know all right so let me let me give my take on that game um so uh san francisco i have is as a secondary stack on the uh on the draft games and I also have FanDuel. I mean, I'm playing FanDuel tonight. I'm actually, I actually, at least my initial build, I put, I put San Fran in my big one on FanDuel. So, so, so I like that. And I, I want to say something else. I mean, like, listen, it's like the, the worst thing you really want to do, but from, you could do some research on, on him too, but apparently this guy's real is like trash. This guy, Sean Kelly, whatever. And, 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 is it possible ever that Colorado on the road can win a slate? I mean, like, I don't know. They're giving this guy like another shot, I guess, but apparently this guy's awful. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm just going to do on principle. I'm, I'm going to throw 10% Colorado in just, just for funsies. I mean, again, it's not nothing I want to do in anything big, but if you, if you knew anything more about this guy, just a couple of blurbs, blurbs I saw like this, this like is, he's like legit awful. So I'm going to, I might, I might take a shot at San Francisco, giving this guy a chance just to earn something and just get, get rocked by an awful Colorado. That's, that's like a, that's like a ultra, ultra galaxy brain. You don't have to do it type of play. It's, I mean, you guys have to factor in that it could very well sort of be a semi bullpen game. He's a young, um, and, and it's, I, I'm, I'm not on the, on the, the, on board with calling guys terrible who are 25 years old. Yeah. Yeah. He's but, terrible today. How about that? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that part I would I can I can say that he's been really bad in the majors. Um I I don't think that uh yeah, I mean he's been back and forth. Uh um I, I get it. I, I hear you, you know. I mean, kind I, of a, listen, how about this? Want, let's say I let's say I want to play like two like let's say I want to play Woodruff and Nola somehow. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. I get it. No, I it's, it it's, probably, it's probably bad. It's probably bad. I don't think it's that I bad. I figured I'd bring it up. I figured I'd bring it up. I will point out that you're pay- you thought like you're getting like a discount for these guys. They're expensive. Right. That's true. They're like one of the more expensive stacks. And it's just, which means literally they're going to be like less than 1% on. You don't think oh, that, uh, you don't think Ryan McMahon at 5K on the road is going to be chalky? <laughs> <laughs> he might be the, probably, he'll be the most popular of them. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you you kind of piqued my interest a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to go enough because I've got too many stacks. And no, it is, I've you got, got, you got, you got to play. You got to play 50 lineups to get to this. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe, but you know, it's now that you said it, you, I might have to just throw it into one. Of the, <laughs> I like, put it in the universe. Like that. Put one in the four and see what happens. Exactly. I like the. I like the. Um. I do. I do really like the giant side though, and yep. Um. Primarily a righty uh, bullpen. They might bring in some lefties. I mean, I don't know the Giants. Uh. I like I like one through one through five in the order. Um, actually, I don't mind even if you want to go down to the to the guys a little lower. I, I really like the Giants, and they're right there for me with Atlanta, with Boston and Baltimore, and with the Angels. 
Um, I just have to decide which how I'm going to prioritize between those teams. And because of the Angels' ownership and their their pricing on the on the Otani Trout combination, maybe I end up doing a little bit of uh, San Francisco with a. Uh, it's not. I mean, she's a few parts of Atlanta, but something like that. So, I think. So so he, so here here's the here's the here are the game stacks. So what, let's say a game stack. Today. Yeah, go. I want a game stack Baltimore Boston. Mm-hmm. And this is like GPP stuff. I want a reverse game stack Cubs Phillies, mm-hmm. which means getting that other Philly, that, that Cubs pitcher in for no reason. And then I want a game stack the the, the Angels, which means putting the, the A's on the other side. And then and then for, for all for all the cheese, we, we game stack candlestick park with uh with uh with Colorado and San Francisco. No, I love like it. Any of that. You know, so there it is. Yeah, it's too bad. What if it was if it was like seventy five degrees or like fluke right. somehow miraculously? I might even be on board with you. <laughs> right, right. Because um, I, I like I think both spots. Are, you can definitely make a good case for both sides. You think you think you think you're going to play uh, the Dodgers in anything big? I don't know if I'll play them in anything big. I keep looking at it, and I think there's too many other stacks that I like a little bit better. Okay. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Like if there was okay. a day to do it on a full slate against, I I, I don't mind them at all against Musgrove. Uh, you know, but again, probably better for a smaller slate or the evening slate or something like that than it would be for the main slate. Um, I think I just like the other stacks a little little bit better. Um, yeah, he gave up two home runs to them in five innings last time they he pitched. He went, he went against. They've them. hit him pretty well. He's got a low strikeout rate against them. He has a lot of a uh, ten uh, percent walk rate. Uh, yeah. They're hitting two sixty off him as a team, and with uh, thirteen extra base hits and hundred, so about almost a ten percent. Um, uh, extra base hit rate. Yeah, actually it is a 10% one. So I, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm certainly okay with it. They're definitely familiar with them. And again, you just don't remember, they're not playing for anything. Somebody might be pulled for defensive replacement things. So that, that even takes me a little further off of them. Although they do kind of like to win these games against San Diego. Yeah. But that's what I've got. And I've got Nola Woodruff Kirby as my favorite pitchers. And I think I'm going to end up with Atlanta combined with San Fran as my main stack as of right now, but I might switch it over to Boston and Baltimore. Yep. All right. Good luck, everybody. Uh, we're going to be recording a football video coming up. Sheets has got like 700 videos he's been doing. So yep. you guys will be seeing all those. And uh, hopefully we can do just a little better than Sheets did last night. Hopefully Sheets can do just a little better than Sheets did last night. And, and yep. uh, we can all be winners tonight. So good Sounds luck, everybody. Good. Okay. Send me 